On this Veterans Day, we are honoring those who serve our country, and I am privileged to have some special guests in studio with me today. Retired Master Sergeant David Crenshaw and his service dog, Doc, are here, like so many uh, veterans. David suffers from PTSD after serving 18 years in Iraq, but that's where Doc comes in. David says the service dog from Canines for Warriors has changed his life, and David and Doc are here with me now. Thank you both for being here. David, PTSD is a difficult thing for people to understand sometimes. And you say you have severe PTSD but high functioning. So can you talk about what that feels like to you and what it looks like from the outside? So I guess the best way to do it is to start what it looks like from the outside. It looks functioning normally. You know, you're an everyday person in society. You're able to go to work. You're able to, you know, at least be with your family, maybe not to the extent that you really should be. Um, but for the inside, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of worrisome. Um, you're often worried about, am, am I doing what's right for my family? Most of the time, you kind of know you're not your true self, so you've always got that in the back of your mind. And then occupationally, you're out there at work and you're just facing the everyday dangers. For me, I was a former law enforcement officer, so that just amplified the anxieties that I always had. And I was bringing those anxieties home and ergo passing it off to my family unknowingly. So uh, from the outside, everything looks fine, and on the inside, you're suffering all this pain. Yes, absolutely. What made you decide to apply for a service dog from Canines for Warriors? Well, I wanted to be able to advocate for myself, my own mental health, and I didn't want to be uh, zombied out, as they say, with the uh, when you prescribe medicines. It really takes away from your feeling, and it almost kind of leaves you in the same sense that you were with PTSD, minus the anxiety, but now you don't have any feelings. So being able to get a dog you know, it's, a, it's unconditional love. There, you, can't, you can't bottle that, unfortunately. Now, when you see a veteran come home with a missing limb, right, that yes. loss is tangible, that disability is tangible, how big do you think a problem, um, the problem of mental health is for veterans? And do you feel that they're getting the support they need? Well, the big problem with the tangibles, right, they're easy. We, we can focus on that, we can fix that. The invisible wounds are what makes it the hardest part, right, because Sometimes the veterans themselves don't know it, and then obviously others don't know it. So a lot of that, you know, the knowing is, is half the battle, as they say. So once you're able to recognize that, and I think we've done a, a good job at learning the signs and teaching veterans and service members what to recognize within themselves so that we can actually start to, to combat the PTSD that, uh, you know, so many of us are coming back with, unfortunately. And medication does help many people, and I think that's kind of easier for people to understand, but it may be hard to understand, how is a dog helping you with PTSD? So can you talk us through how your life changed once Doc came into it? You know, it's, again, it's unconditional love. I'm not being judged. I'm not worried about how, I'm not being stigmatized. That's the big thing that comes with mental health is the stigmatism. And with that, he loves me no matter what. I wake up every day, I take care of him, I love on him and he's gonna always serve me. So in that regard, you know, that's, that's just a natural part of healing as the human nature aspect. Do you feel like there are things that we as humans can learn from how dogs are helping you and others heal? Absolutely, I mean, just walking around, you know, your building today, you can see the smiles put on your, your you know, your coworker's face just by seeing him and, and then touching him. You feel that difference. It de-escalates so much tension and anxiety, not just me, it does it for everybody, and that's the magic behind them, truly. Hopefully we can all learn how to show each other that kind yeah, of we, love. Absolutely. Now, Canines for Warriors actually rescued dogs from high-kill shelters and trained them to be service dogs. What does it do for you to think about that being where Doc came from? Well, it's, it's really... Um... It's, it's really touching in a way because, and more so, again, you said most of them are rescue dogs, but a lot of them are on kill shelter list. Mm -hmm. Doc was six months old when he was in a kill shelter. And seeing him and what he's done for me and what he's done for others, it's sinful to think that his life was, would have been cut short. So the ability to be able to save a life and, and help provide for a veteran is, is just symbiotic. And what's even more so, Myself and, and other veterans have lost friends or other service members, in, you know, as a result of war. 
So being able to kind of recoup that loss, in a sense, by rescuing someone in need, it gives us that sense of purpose. And with that sense of purpose, it gives us direction. And we could, you know, be able to navigate life a little bit better than before. It sounds like you both saved each other. And Absolutely. you definitely put a smile on everyone's faces in the studio today. Thank you so much for Thank your you. service to this country. We owe you so much. Our and pleasure. Doc, Doc, I think, is very relaxed. In case anyone's wondering if Doc is stressed, I think the answer is very clearly no. <laughs> David, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.